Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman, flown all the way over from England and here I am in New York, Long Island, checking out Didario. This is going to be really, really cool. I get to go inside, pry everywhere I'd like to, speak to people, find out how things are made, things are analysed, produced, worked on, all the geeky, techy things, all the exciting, cool new things coming up. You're going to get checking out with me. Let's go. Tomorrow we've got time in the studio that's just yours. Like you said, you want to do demos, the studio is totally free. I don't know what kind of condition this is in. This will be yours all day tomorrow, as much yeah. as you need it tomorrow. I booked the whole day out. So really cool. they're working in here today, I think, doing some video stuff. But Hi, I'm Brian Vance. I'm the director of product management, which means pretty much in charge of anything or working on any project that has to do with Anything from coming up with product ideas to doing the marketing and packaging, and uh, you know, fortunately working with guitar players every day. Yeah, this is Rob Cunningham. Did you Bob at Nam or no? I recognize him. I think so, yeah. Probably, yes. Yeah. Uh, Rob Cunningham, I'm the uh, product manager for all the accessories, so all the picks, capos, cables, tuners. Day-to-day uh, -day is just uh, managing product development. Everything to packaging, advertising, the marketing. Shop drops about three pounds of hair and hair. <laughs> it's the quickest weight loss I've ever undergone in my life. You know. I feel a lot better for it. Yeah. yeah, it's good. I just need more beard and more tattoos, and then I feel like I'll work on stage. You know. Well, you're in New York. It's, there's a lot of tattooing going on there. You know? oh, don't tell me. I've got a week off after this. I might get cut. You know, to Dario. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so anyway, Mike, uh, Mike and Rob do all the. Nice to meet you. I came up with this really stupid idea for uh, Dedare to put on three different sets of strings that I've never tried before, and for me to just kind of react to the three different sets of strings and see what I felt and see what I think. And um, so thank you to Steve for putting this first set of random strings on that he won't tell me anything about them. Uh, we're just playing them in, I'm gonna get them stretched and played for a bit, and then I'm gonna sort of let you know what I think about this random set of Dedare strings. So, uh, set of strings number one, I have, I have an idea what they are because I felt them, but I've been told nothing at all. This is a completely blind test, although I can see clearly. First impressions are that it's something that my playing needs to get used to because it feels like a balanced tension set. I kind of like it. I didn't think I would. Uh, I kind of do. The one thing I have discovered though is that when I start bending some of the lower strings, where I would characteristically be used to putting less or more energy into a bend to get to a, a tone, uh, that energy has changed. So I'm over bending or under bending. And what that tells me is two things. Firstly, I don't listen enough to my own playing. And secondarily, that there's obviously a period of adjustment to get used to these, what I think are balanced tension strings. <laughs> I'm convinced these are balanced tension. I, I really enjoy the feel, and what I'm noticing is it seems that some of the, the higher strings are a bit louder than they were before because I think they've got more mass in them. <laughs> to find out what the strings were that they threw at me randomly uh, so I can react to my own either stupidity or brilliance and we'll find out which. Little so column what was... A, little column B. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what was set number one? Please be balanced tension. Set number one was not our balanced tension. Ah! Unfortunately. You're kidding me! Pure nickel. No! Wow! Sound of the 50s. That's insane. 
I'm absolutely amazed. So pure nickel is actually a softer material, so that could help make you think it was well, no, it's but probably just that I was completely incorrect. Wrong. Try again, Rob. Did you do the humidifier? Yeah, yep. yep. really. Because I fitted it in my case. I've got data from flying it from England to here. Oh, the humid Did you get a humidifier? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So Humidatrack is actually, it's pretty cool because most people humidify their guitars and they have no idea what's actually happening. So um, it's just a little sensor that you drop in your case and then you have a smartphone app. The cool thing is if you have a lot of guitars, most people don't check every single guitar every day to see if it's humidified. So now at least you can, in one app, you can check, you know, 10 guitars in a matter of like five seconds. Well, you, you might be our first, first traveler. To yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. You're probably out of first traveler. <laughs> yeah. well, wow, oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. 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 So, Engl England, <laughs> and then we're in an airplane and it's freezing. And then we're back into New York. That's Look at that. Cool. That's well cool. And what I was great, greatly glad about was that there are no impacts. Oh, so you I was had thinking, that on? Yeah, I was thinking this would either be the most terrifying thing to watch. <laughs> well, when you're <laughs> traveling, though, make sure to turn your impact thing off. Oh, really? So it'll eat the battery. Yeah. Off. All right, how'd you do that? Yeah, I don't know, Rob. You can show me. Cool. That's a cool thing. <laughs> so, my name is Brian Johnson. I am the senior product specialist here at the Dario. I work primarily for the fretted line of strings. But I have my hand in a lot of things. Um, I basically do whatever Jim tells me to do. I never studied to do any of this stuff. I've been trained by the people here, which is like even better of an effect. Um, I went to school for way other things like law. And and I want loads of like geeky nerdery We got about tons of facts. All right, and we'll take you around and you can ask any questions to anybody. Yeah, once you get in the engineering department, yeah, uh, you right. can get really geeky. Yeah. Really geeky. Really yeah. geeky. Yeah. We do lots of geeky things around here. Um, <laughs> I can't keep track of them all. Yeah. You know, actually, probably some of the stupidest things I probably couldn't say on record. <laughs> Shirt on, off. <laughs> and we would pull them and stretch them in order to measure how well they stay in tune. This is actually how we validate our NYXL strings in terms of pitch stability. Hi, my name is Steve Musiolo and I'm a product specialist at the Dario. Um, it's everything from R&D to marketing to sales, promotions, and everything in between. I'm a songwriter. I write songs and I play them. I perform around New York City. My last name is Musiolo. The name of my group is Moose. So Moose is a nickname, and then Mooch is also a nickname because people can't pronounce past four letters, so they just see M-U-C-C -C and they go Mooch. Uh, mainly on acoustic guitar, uh, ukulele I picked up because we were developing some strings for it and I needed to kind of get in tune with what they sounded like. Bass player is the product specialist for Promark, Eli, he's uh, my drummer, my main drummer, so we get to rehearse in here sometimes. That's it, just doing the original music scene in New York City. It's tough, but we just keep going. My name is Fan Tao and I'm the Director of Research and Development, and I've been working here for 17 years. My name is Clay Pipkin. I'm an acoustics engineer here, and I've been here for just under two years. I think one of my favorite ones was when we, um, we hooked up uh, on either ends, we took a string, and either end of the string we actually attached alligator clips and uh, ran a sine wave uh, through the string. Mm -hmm. and we put a magnet at a certain point of the string, and, and um, mm -hmm. it caused the string to start vibrating, because it was the sine wave was close to its natural frequency of the tuning of the string. And um, we started turning the, the volume up in the amplifier that we were running the signal through. And all of a sudden, the string started to smoke. <laughs> and it's discolored. I'm like, oh, I'm fucking quick. And that was probably one of the more fun things. I don't know if the setting fires to things is geeky or not, but it was fun. Oh, but you have so. to destroy things, you know, right. once in a yeah, while. Right. Have fun. Right. Kind of like Mythbusters or something. So we had yeah. coffee, espresso, whatever you need that's to cool. get what I needed to jacked up. That would be good. <laughs> Really important. We're, we're an Italian company, man. We have to have espresso. Okay. Yeah. And Tesla. Love it. Yeah. Oh, it smells amazing. It's a little campaign. Do you want an espresso? Yeah. Let's do it. We have a better espresso than Thank you very much. <laughs> Corrosion intercept bags. This is, dates back to the 90s. Pretty bold ad back then of showing what happens to strings when you don't protect them from ex extreme you know, environmental conditions. And this is what our strings look like. I'm Jennifer Verdi Cohen. I have been with Diderio for 16 years. Actually, April 10th, I'll be here 16 years. And my current role is uh, Director of Project Management. So. I have the fun task of wrangling in all our creatives and our clients, which are our brands, and making sure our projects work smoothly. It is the, by far the most interesting job I've ever had. It combines all my interests in science, music, 
engineering? I'm kind of a newbie compared to Ben. <laughs> um, but I mean, I come from a uh, music and science background, and uh, it's kind of hard to find anywhere where you can combine the two. And Jadario's really invested in what we do. You know, I like think they actually care about the science, and uh, they care about the people who are actually making everything, and, and it's, uh, it's nice to see that. So. It's kind of a family company, even though we're big, we're still small, because Jim's here every day, and he wants to teach people things, and he gives us those opportunities. But I played guitar since I was 13. Truly, my brother was my biggest influence in that, that and I only say it because it leads me to even today. He was the metal guy. He, he introduced me to Metallica, to Carcass, to all, all different types of music, and I wanted to be him. I wanted to drop the clarinet, and I wanted to play his uh, BC Rich that he had. Played in bands since I was 15, gigged tours, the whole thing. Um, still studied, did all this other stuff, but then I finally wound up here at the Dario, um, and I get to do development on strings, I get to touch the operations side, I get a little bit of everything, um, and luckily this company allows us to kind of do that. Small wrap wire spools of silver plated copper, Right. No, this is phosphor bronze, okay. so this would be Acoustics. like for an EJ-16. Right, right, right. Like right. The best big, big so how, how much does this one? That's probably seven. Baby rhino. Seven pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Seven pounds. It's, it's immense. pretty heavy though. Yeah. You know, There's something really, pl something really yeah. pleasurably geeky about that. So I'm always thinking strings, right? <laughs> you're, thinking, you're thinking metal. I'm thinking strings. That's, yeah. If you don't have a good root material, yeah. then you're not going to get the good output, right? Absolutely. So all of the things that happen during the process yeah. increase our likelihood of getting a good product. It's end. just like coffee, great beans, yeah. testing the roast, making sure it's not burnt, not and then end burnt. the product ends up being great tasting, unless you're in England, which case it's I love coffee. <laughs> How do you guys mess it up? This is a test bed that we use. It's made of solid granite. It basically eliminates any variable, uh, any external factor, so we can only measure how the string is behaving. It's an anti-guitar. It's an anti-guitar. It doesn't really make any sound necessarily, but we can measure sound from it mm. and, and be very specific and consistent in what we're trying to measure. It records all that data, so it broke at 57 pounds with 0.27% elongation at 278. pounds? They got a lot of headroom. You only tune it to about 15 pounds on an electric and 23 pounds on an acoustic, yeah. so you got plenty of room to spare. What I like about designing and making the guitar strings is that we're kind of like creating the interface to our own instruments, right? So when I'm sitting down and I'm playing my guitar and I think to myself, man, I really wish it could sound this certain way, then we can kind of go back and say, okay, well, I want it to be brighter or like this is, this is not, um, doesn't cut through enough, right? Or we get an artist who says, hey, like, let's cut through it, do more. And so with, with the strings, we can kind of design it that way. And uh, I think that's what I like about the strings, that you, know, you can still have your same instrument that you love and you know, but you can tweak it with something you know, simple as changing out a set. Uh, Mooch put on set number two, and I started stretching them out, and I'm like, whoa, they're really stretchy and kind of, they feel completely different. Um, they feel rougher to the touch. They're, they're really kind of stretchy and uh, just they feel completely different from anything I've ever experienced that Daddario have made. I mean, I'm a MYXL player at the moment and I have been using the um, XLs before, just nickel coated strings. These feel completely different and once I've tuned up, I see how they feel to play. Man, I'm really feeling these. Um, I don't know, I can't, this is really difficult. I've set myself quite a difficult challenge here. The feel is completely different. They seem a lot softer, um, but rougher, and they seem louder. Um, so it would seem to me to make sense that these would be steel, and I've never played steel strings before, um, but they, they've got that rougher feel that I would imagine is indicative of that. They feel, much easier to bend 
Um, like I know this is a 10 gauge, but it feels like it's kind of a nine and a half gauge to me. So I'm finding it much easier to play with them, which is kind of a nice thing and slightly brighter. <laughs> much much softer than I'm used to and as a result my picking is too strong so when I'm, when I'm hammering <laughs> I'm hitting too hard and it's gonna burr, burr, kind of effect where it's tuning up and then tuning down so probably for these I would go up a gauge I like the feel I'm really interested to know what they are because it's something very different for me and I'm liking the sound, uh, more importantly, I think it's got a great kind of um, slightly crisper sound to it. I think they're steel. Set two. What do you think it was? I thought it was steel. Pro Steels. Oh, steel. yeah. Bring it in. Can I have some five? Some five. Four or five. Okay, so I've never played steel. What gave it away was the feel was quite rough. Yep. And on the factory tour, Brian had said that the steel strings felt slightly rougher and they did sound louder, um, so that's cool. I got one of them correct, I'm feeling good about that, and I really like these, these felt nice. Yeah, those are great strings. Definitely have that rough feel, very high harmonic output, um, just very magnetic, so. And are they, are they brighter than? Yep, they're one of the brightest, probably our brightest guitar strings. Ever. Right, that's what I also felt was, was the situation. Really like these. Um, needed a thicker set for me to, to feel at home with, but mm -hmm. I really like them, and they also felt really bendy. Yeah, well, we do make them in all types of gauges, too, so you can get them. Check our website. Right? Okay, one, one right. I love Jim. Um, I do. I adore him. Don't show him this part. Um, but I do. I think it's such a unique um, experience to have that I've had the pleasure of working with, you know, the owner of a company so closely in my 16 years here. And to watch him work is amazing. To see how his mind, like, he just, I mean, you look around, he designed the equipment here. He comes up with, like, marketing ideas. He, the, he comes up with new products. But his his mind can go anywhere. And to sit in a room and watch that is always, it's, it's, it leaves you in awe. It definitely does. You know, I'm a I'm a pretty straightforward kind of Beck Page Clapton Hendrix guy. You know, I come started playing guitar and I'm embarrassed it's like 1980, a long time ago. And uh, when I was growing up playing guitar, you know, there wasn't classic rock on the radio. It was you know punk and new wave and even the end of disco. And you you had to find the real good music. You know, you had to know who to go to or know what records to buy or older brothers helped you. And I just found my way to. Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and Cream and Stones and Doors and Hendrix and Who and all that stuff and that's kind of what I grew up on. Playing since like middle school, so what, eighth grade. Back in the 80s, 90s, I did have the pointy, crazy <laughs> guitars. Still gig every weekend. Uh, not doing originals, we're actually just a bar band doing, you know, classic rock, modern rock, kinds of all over the map kind of songs. I start where most people do with the standard EX on 110, 10 to 46. I like to balance the tension um, out a little bit more. I have my Les Paul, which is my standard, which is my main, and even that's just cut custom gauges within it. I mix, match, and do it, and I have the customization because I understand that. A lot of players don't really know. They get the standard, and the standard is great. But once you start really being particular and you want it your way. I think first off is, is feel and reliability of the string. I mean, you know, so for instance, our NYXL strings, stronger, better tuning stability. So the first thing you do is like you got this perceived sense of quality because you string it up and it's immediately in tune, right? So that's, that's one thing. A guitar amp has an EQ, right? So you can always tweak something with an EQ. So if you want more treble, you can always turn up the treble, right? But I suppose knowing that, let's say you have all your knobs turned up to 11, right? And you, um, 
if you know the sound of your strings and you know what you're doing, or if you have a string that has more output um, in certain frequencies, uh, I, I think you can prob you can you can twist the way it sounds. You can change the way your instrument and your tone is. Uh, D'Addario has around 1,200 employees globally, and we have businesses all over the world actually, and lots of different brands. So we don't just do guitar strings. We also own drumsticks and Promark and Evans drum heads, um, orchestral strings for the you know orchestral musicians and Re Rico and D'Addario woodwinds. So you know we kind of talk to the whole band, sort of so so to speak. So all that gets rolled up into the dairy. We have plantations in France and Argentina where we grow cane. We have uh, manufacturing facilities in Houston and in California. So we're we're spread out all over the world actually, as a vertically integrated company. You know, owning our own destiny in terms of the raw materials is really important to us. <clears throat> and when we decided to make major investments into wire, you know, we we found. As we got better at it, we really got better at it, and it wasn't quick, but we got be we got better at it, and our engineers were able to quantify and measure some of the some of the really amazing um, outputs from drawing our own wire and owning that whole process. We actually just had a German engineering company do a whole third party test to validate our claims on NYXL. We had no idea they were doing it. We just got it the other day. Everything, every point that we hit on, they validated in in that paper. And that's really good to see because it's, we're not just putting out strings and you know puppies and rainbows about things and just hoping that we sell it, you know, just to sell. We're actually putting out something that is an improvement over something else um, that people are used to. I think for most players, the sound of the string is much more important than they think it uh, it is. Um, and uh, e even if it's a very small difference in sound between different strings, um, those small differences are what's important to, to the players, because players are very sensitive to small differences. I'll tell you the main difference between gauges is not tone directly, although indirectly it is. Um, the main difference is in the response and the feel. And so, but because the feels and response differently, you're gonna get a different sound as a result. So yes, the different gauges does affect the tone indirectly in a very important way. We had already been formulating and working with some different types of wrap wire on a separate project, and we sort of took a couple projects and fused them into one. And the wrap wire on, on NY, uh, NYXL is a different formulation of nickel plated steel, um, which really almost pre EQs the string to give an electric guitar player that 2 to 3K bump that you would almost bump up in the EQ if you wanted the guitar to pop out in the mix a little more. We just, I wouldn't say we stumbled onto it, but. Um, that was our goal, was just to make a string that was a better better musical string, not just more of everything, but what's the stuff that a guitar player wants to hear, you know, how, how they want the guitar to hear and be more present. Oh, that's tricky. Okay, so I'll have, I have two. So for Italian food, it would be Bamantis on Wither Street in Brooklyn. The Yankees eat there. Um, definitely the best Italian food you'll find. And for steak, I would say Del Frisco's in Manhattan. It's in the McGraw Hill building. It's def uh, definitely my favorite. Best place to get pizza in New York is Rizzo's Pizza in Astoria on Steinway Street. Actually, my favorite place is right here on Long Island called El Paso. It makes these little like street tacos that are to die for. So I would actually have to go with a Long Island El Paso taco. I grew up in Queens here, and it's the, the melting pot, I guess, is what they always say, things like that. But it's truly everything, anything, everybody. Um, that's the best part is like you're in one region that, I don't know, pick an ethnicity, pick, pick anything, and it's there. It's the food, it's the people, it's, it's the culture. I like the little mom and pops that I found in Queens. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to Pizza Rama, but that's only because I kind of grew up on it. But I don't think the Italian guys own it anymore that were, that were doing it, the, the old grandfather used to do it. But uh, that was fabulous pizza. You gotta, you gotta go around, you gotta kind of find your thing. Everybody goes, same place in the city. I miss all the little bodega things that would be open till four or five. Pizza at four or five a.m. in the morning when you're either, um, Hungover or having fun, we'll say, is the best thing. And it's just gotta be hot. Hot pizza at three, four, five in the morning, perfect. Wow. So that's what it starts Probably out gives at. you an idea what gold, how much gold weighs. 99.97% pure tin. Head free. So if you heat that up over 450, it turns to liquid. Uh, there, there is no average day because so many things are going on. Um, we have infinitely more projects and uh, more challenges than we have time to
to work on it. I mean, we have a huge list of projects, things we'd like to do, and it would take multiple lifetimes to get through all of them. So that's what, there, there is no average day. So we're in the heart of planet waves, oh, wow. which, <laughs> in the heart of planet waves, which many people don't know is at the direct company. Yes. And uh, this is where all the American stage cables are made. If you order custom picks, this is where they're made. Um, it's really cool, everyone's singing and happy and chilling out. And I'm walking past thousands of plectrums, awesome cables, good vibes. So these are some of the custom picks that have been made recently for a biscuit company. Mind your, mind your own biscuits. I like that. <laughs> are these are blank plectrums. These are blank, and we paint them or oh. print logos on them, whatever we need to do to get the artwork on them. Very cool. Yeah. I wish you could be in here because there's a, a certain smell that I'm really enjoying. Mm. Gradually getting happier. Third and final set in my string challenge. Uh, again, I haven't even touched these yet. Let's have a little feel and see what we think. Uh, much thicker on top. I have no idea. I'm going to have to tune them. They feel nice and soft. Yeah. What would be really funny is if they just put MYXLs on <laughs> and I'm so used to um, playing or expecting to play something completely radically different that I would ignore, but I don't think these are MYXL. <laughs> So these are much softer feeling and more, they seem more pliable, uh, less rough. I'm going to say that they feel like they might be coated, although that, that could just be me expecting something a little bit different from them. The problem I'm having as a player is that the, the low string, although it's, it seems thicker, it's, it's quite soft for me and I think I'm, I'm just used to playing uh, a set that is stiffer and harder and less bouncy and less kind of bendy and these are very flexible. slightly duller, uh, but not duller in the sense that they're not bright, just they sound less bright than the previous set that I played, which I think was steel. I think these are coated um, strings. <laughs> and the final set. What do you think? I thought it was some kind of coated thing. Not coated. Oh, no! Oh, you're kidding me! Oh, man. And what's even funnier about that is that on the camera I said, wouldn't it be funny if they gave me some MYXLs and I was so looking for something that would be completely different that I wouldn't notice? And yeah, it's MYXLs. There you go. Well, that was a really valuable experiment for me because I learned that I know a lot less than I think I know. And I don't listen enough to my own playing and uh, the feel of a set of strings is completely different depending on the material they're made from. Well, it doesn't matter. You made them all sound great. So <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> any any words of wisdom? Like which which is of these three? Which are your favorite ones? NYX sounds for sure. I already said that in our last video. But now that you have those on your guitar, because that was the third one, yeah, you can keep them on for forever. That's why I use anyway. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay, guys. So there was one slight amendment to make to the reveal, which is that neither of us knew that the last set also would balance tension. Um, 
Yeah, so the, the MYXLs and the balance tension, and even though I was, I think it's because I told myself the first set were balance tension because apparently they're slightly different weights. Is that right, Brian? Tensions. Yeah, different tensions, alloys. Different yeah, alloys, different, different alloys, tensions. Different weights. So I'm forgiven for thinking they were balanced because in relation to a, to a regular set, whatever regular set is, they're different. Um, but yeah, these were balanced tension, I had no idea. I know they are, and I still have no idea. <laughs> it's just, I'm not really, I think I'm, I think I'm desensitized to it now. I think my, my inner sensitized situation has been removed. My picking hand is telling me it feels like they're balanced. My left hand has no idea what it's doing. Well, once you get used to them, and then you go back to a regular set, you'll feel the difference. I will, apparently. Right, experiment over, thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, New York City is great. I live in Astoria, Queens. And um, just being able to go out, you can go anywhere and see original music. I mean, there's a ton of people really, really trying really hard, you know. There's a lot of, you can see anything you want. You can see cover, a lot of great cover bands, a lot of great original music. Um, I'd have to say the city is really just one of the best things. You could get lost in there for years, you know, if you wanted to, because there's a different thing to do every night around every corner. I think you get a nice cross-section of people with different experiences as kind of a melting pot. I mean, I grew up on Long Island and the only time um, I didn't live here is when I was away at college where I went to school in Florida. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, you get a really nice suburban, urban life. I'm married, I have kids, so, you know, I have a house and property, but I get, you know, it's a quick commute into the city life and you get a lot of exposure to people that kind of live that life every day. Living on Long Island, uh, there's, a, there's actually a good music scene right here on Long Island. We're like a half an hour outside of Manhattan, which is ridiculous. You can see any type of music that you want there. Um, every major tour comes through the city. So you can see just about everybody on any tour when it comes through. Pretty much anywhere on Long Island, if you drive long enough, you're gonna hit a beach. So that's pretty good. Um, the best part of performing and being in New York was you could perform for a, a multitude of places right in the middle of the city. There was 30, 40 places. You move one to one, you could do gigs all through the night. Um, and being when I was 15 and 16 doing that and Battle of the Bands, everybody's just got their Battle of the Bands story. Um, you get up in front of all your friends and they watch you do things. And it's funny how when you're young and you do things, they think you're a god. Because you're standing there with your guitar and it's like, I suck, dude. You have no idea, but I'm better than you. So we have a really great community of musicians in the company. So what my personally, I have an acoustic duo and I play, and I play in a jam band here, here and there, um, electric. But mainly I play acoustic more these days. There, there's more gigs in acoustic. You know, there's restaurants and bars and those kind of places. Uh, I probably play about... 50 gigs a year, something like that. You know, decent, keeps me busy, keeps my chops up. It's a great way to test product. You know, you want to take a new pick out and give it a run at a gig. It, you know, you know, in a, you know in an hour or two hours if it's going to be something you want to, you know, take back to the office and write and rave about. The one band is called Five Stone, which I don't like the name, but they had the name before I joined. My other band is called Witkin's Breakdown. Everyone in the band I went to high school with, for some reason, the school put all of us in one classroom. We went nuts, gave the teacher a nervous breakdown, and one day she left class and never came back. So when we put a band together after, you know, as we're older, we decided we had to call the band Whitkin's Breakdown for Mrs. Whitkin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I used the uh, EXL 110, the balance tensions. Uh, once, to me, once you get used to them, there's no going back to a regular set. Um, just having that even feel across every single string just feels really good to me. The people, I think, is what makes it, you know, the most worthwhile. I've been here 16 years, and I would say that the people here, are, they're like family. They definitely are. And whether you're having a really great day and it's, you know, less stressful or it's like, you know, the day you want to kind of jump off the building because it's just been, you know, utter craziness. It's the people here that, you know, get you through it or make it worthwhile or you look back on even the most stressful and, and you know, trying times and it's, you know, we're together, we're a family, we're a, we're a group. It's, you know, it's definitely the one of the biggest things that keeps me here. Maybe the one thing about this job is like I got to pretty much meet and work with all my heroes, which is, you know, when I was playing guitar in my bedroom, you know, I had these like pictures on my wall and now I'm like talking to the guy on the phone, like talking about strings and cables is pretty freaking neat. You growing up a guitar shredder dude, you gotta like Joe Satriani, you know, so I worked on all the straps and all the picks development with him. 
Uh, so I, I talk to Joe all the time. So, I mean, that's an awesome relationship. It's great to, uh, you know, be able to just talk to a guy like that, you know, and someone that's so, he's the man, you know. Just like half the guys that like were like, you know, I grew up listening to all the time and trying to emulate their licks and then you get a phone call from them asking about like, what string should I use on this guitar I got? You know, it's kind of a cool perk of the job. Awesome. That is literally all I need. Oh, good. It's really, Thank really good. <laughs>